Well, good evening. What you're about to hear is the January 11th episode of the Sunday Evening Overdose. Well, we've seen better days around here. Uh, the Earthling lost a dear old friend this week. He'll be joining us briefly over the phone, but that's it for him. Uh, could not make it in after that, so... I myself am uh, experiencing some life-changing legal issues, shall we say. I hope I'll be able to tell the story one day on the show. Um, got into a little run-in with the law, and uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cost me big time. So, anyways, I wasn't going to do the show this week, and I decided I didn't want to look back on a blank spot where week 29 should have been and always kind of remember all this fucked up shit that's going on instead of just, uh, you know, being able to keep moving forward and forget about this bullshit. Due to us all being distracted by this hardship, uh, I didn't, uh, I didn't press record for the first 20 minutes of the show or so when we kind of explained all the things I'm explaining to you now. So there you go. We'll now join the Sunday Evening Overdose already in progress. Please enjoy. In touch with us on the Ustream, social stream, and on Facebook. Sunday evening overdose. Oh. So we're, we're working in close quarters here, so there's a little shuffling around. All right, look. That's not going to have been recorded anywhere. Can you close that door? Um, yeah, I got it. Let's go over it really quick. Uh, recap. Look, something happened. Okay. We can't talk about it too much. Um, it happened to me. It's a legal thing. What all did we fucking just say? Let's just recap everything because um, I don't want to fucking uh, forget how I feel today. Um, I, I was saying, you know, I've been out of the system for years. I can't go back in. I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. It makes me want to die. Going into a courtroom makes me want to fucking kill someone else or die yeah and i can't stand this i just like uh what else did i say well i think we we should note that we thought it was important to do a show today even though you yes. had an incident and the earthling um lost a close friend overnight and so he's not with us today but we didn't want to skip a week and then always have that hole for the one week where we didn't do i didn't want to yeah i didn't want to constantly be looking back and seeing, okay, week 29. Oh, that's the week that we didn't do anything because I was too much of a fucking cocksucker because I was sad about my legal problems, you know? Yeah. I don't want that fucking hanging over my head. I'm going to have enough hanging over my head as it is. Do you know how long I've had to not deal with this fucking shit? You know, I, the last two years I was on probation still, I would, that, that was nothing. I didn't. I had everything paid off. I would just, just had to show up. scoot in there every other month bullshit with some idiot for 10 minutes and get out of there now i'm back at the fucking beginning of this long process that is the fucking legal system and and being charged with a crime and uh having to fucking deal with it what else do we talk about before sorry everybody we're just recapping because we did not fucking record the beginning of the show um, um the way you were talking to the police officers in the station oh god yeah i i don't know can we, I, I feel like i can't even say it again can i what did you what do you guys remember um that you basically just didn't let them intimidate you yeah i didn't answer any questions i was playing the whole game of uh i don't recall you know whenever they would ask me something uh they would try to intimidate you and yeah i guess we were going into the point of you know they don't want your your money and your physical captivity i mean they do but what they really want is to take something deeper from you and uh to scoop out a little piece of who you are if they can and i'm not sure if they consciously do it or if most of them just know that it feels good to make another human being submit you know um so you know i didn't let them do that to me i looked them in the eye and i told them the whole time do whatever you fucking want but you're not taking a bit of my fucking soul there is no goddamn way they laughed they thought that was funny but i didn't you know what i mean they probably just had no idea what how to deal with you. No, they because they're used to getting teenagers with 
alcohol. Oh, or, you know what else, too? They thought they could really scare me. Hey, you know, if you don't stop mouthing off, we're going to take you to 26 in California. And I just laughed. I'm like, no, you're fucking not. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. And if you did, so and I, I also told them, I, like, I was, you know... I said something like, what do you think? I'm some scared little white boy. Like, that's going to fucking intimidate me. Ooh, the city jail. Wow. Take me to the city jail, faggot. And then they would just leave the room for like two or three minutes. <laughs> they were probably outside around. like, okay, what the fuck? Now, like, yeah, what are they're they're like, do what the fuck do you do? Say? <laughs> yeah, but they the couldn't. next worst thing. They really will try to intimidate you into answering questions. And you can even reason with them and say, why would I do that? Why would I answer all? Why would I answer these, you know? And why would I incriminate myself are you gonna answer the fucking questions or not you know like no oh uh, okay and then there's nothing they can do you know and then also you said you didn't sign anything except for your release papers yeah they want you to sign all kinds of stuff that proves that they covered their asses basically they right. want you to sign papers that hey we informed you of your rights we informed you of this and that so i just refused to sign all of that um you know that's like remember when you were in the hospital and What's the shot? They give you a shot every day so you don't get like uh, blood clots in your legs, the right. MRSA. Yeah, yeah. That's so, a long, so when you're laying in a hospital bed for days on end, they want to come in and stick this fucking five inch needle like no. in, your, in your in your belly. No. Like right, no. Yeah, like right under your belly button, like in your intestines. No. Oh my God. Dude, it's, it's the worst. And it doesn't hurt that bad. It's just fucking awful. You know, it's Is like it one of the ones that like feels like fire when they inject it. Uh, I had some of those. No, that uh, but no, I I had some uh some IVs when I had like a potassium IV. Oh yeah. That was fucking That's really burned bad. like fire. Yeah. yeah. And no, this was just a long needle. It was a so they don't want you to get blood clots when you're laying in a hospital bed for days on end. They don't want you to get blood clots, so they come in and torture you. Well, but um, is and, the five-inch needle really the only way? Dude, it, I don't know how long it was, but it was like at least three inches, I swear. Oh and, is the nurse wearing like an evil clown mask? No, but, <laughs> like, but what is what is your point? So they want to come in know, and give you the blood is, clot medicine. So um, when you were there, you would... Um, you were like totally ready to go and they were like we need you to stay one more day and so that last day you were there you were like walking around the hospital like i was smoking in weed the chair, in the bathroom smoking yeah. weed in the bathroom um shooting i mean a music video like i did shoot a music video in there yeah like obviously as much activity as you would have been doing if you were not in the hospital and they were like okay we've got to give you your daily shot for this and you were like no i'm not I don't want it. Like I'm walking around, and they were like, "So you're refusing?" And like, "Well, you gotta sign." Yeah, they made this. a big, like, a big dramatic thing. You're gonna have to sign if you're gonna refuse this. I'm like, dude, I've laid in bed for two days before. You know, like, we like, really recommend <laughs> I that, that you that have every it. Week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's my Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. No, I mean not me, but I, I've had plenty of times where I was alcohol poisoned for fucking laid there for two or three days. Yeah. You know, or uh, maybe something like this happened. Like. I probably won't be getting off the couch much for the next few days. Yeah, but um, I mean, my point is just like when you refuse something, then it's, um, you know, it's like such a big deal to go outside the norm. Like I was at the vet and refused to get my cat some vaccines that, and it was like a big fucking deal. Earthling's on the phone. Hey. Hey, what's up? Oh. Hello? Yeah, I'm here. What's going on? Can you please stop showing me pictures? Jesus Christ. Uh, what are you doing? How are you guys? Fucked up. You guys drinking? Fuck yeah. 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 Uh, do you want to say anything about your friend? Uh, Joshua? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Go ahead and give him, give him a little shout out. Shout out to Joshua. Hardest motherfucker, he went as hard as he went. He went too hard, he always went hard. He fucking popped fucking 15 Zedex at a time, and he messed with a drug dad who went as hard as he was. Rest in peace. All right, rest in peace to Josh. So how is, how are all you guys doing okay, or what? No, everybody's fucked, man. Everybody's fucked up over here. You guys got a big group together, or what? They did earlier, but I wasn't there. Um, all right, somebody else is trying to call me. We'll call I called him. because, man, our show got it. it has to go on. Our show must go on. No, I know. That's, I I felt like I couldn't. I you had a fucking shit night. I know. It's all fucked up, man. Well, and things are going to be pretty hard for a while, too, you know. Well, if 
can either if we need a ride somewhere or something, just give me a call, brother. Yeah, man, I'm there for you too. Um, but our show will go yeah. on. It the has show to. must go on. This is the best show out there right now. I mean, if, yeah, with the real people. If we give up, look at where radio is going. You know, no, look, it's fuck radio. It's real people just saying real things to to, to people who are willing to listen. It's completely fucking profound. Yeah, and I mean, once it catches on, it's gonna go somewhere. But um, yeah, we can, can we put a show up for Josh next week too? Yeah, man. We can if you guys. <laughs> If you guys want to put, maybe we can put a little something together. If you guys want to play something about him, you know, put together a little few minute uh, piece about him if you want. Yeah, sure. Um, but uh, are you doing the show or? Going yeah, we're on right now. Um, you're on. All right, well. So yeah, I hope. Uh, I hope uh, you you realized I was recording this conversation. I don't need any more fucking legal trouble. No, that's right. That's right man. You're gonna sue me. Um, no, the show's gonna keep going. Um, we've we've had a lot of fucking. It's been a hard few weeks, really. And uh, I don't know. We're gonna get we're gonna get it on track. We're gonna be back in the studio next week, and we're gonna we're gonna fucking try to make this the the positive point in our lives uh, you know amidst this fucking mountain of shit you try to I just, I, yeah that's why i call it's pretty much word word the show must go on um, yeah well anything if, anything else you want to talk about or do you want to go uh you want to go uh get back to your business there no i gotta go all right earthling you guys hang in there tell everybody uh that we will uh, have you in our prayers or thoughts or whatever. All right. Thank you. Yeah, tell her. Tell her. Uh, hang in there. Fuck. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. We'll see you soon, man. Yeah. It is what it is. All right. Well, sorry again. We'll talk to you later. Later. All right. Holy fuck. All right. So if anyone new is listening, the show isn't usually yeah. such a downer. Yeah, if anyone new is listening, we don't get arrested and have friends die every week. But uh, <laughs> yeah, this is a fucking terrible day. This is a fucking horrible day. What is it, too? What do you even say to somebody? Hang in there. You know? What am no, I fucking... you can't say anything. Your friend is dead. I don't know. I'm sorry. You know, there's nothing you can fucking do. There's nothing you can say. I've been there too. It's just. Well, and most people don't expect you to have anything to say anyway. Right. You know, there's nothing. Nothing fits. Yeah. Everything gets better after a little while and and that's all you can do. You just have to wait. (sighs) You just have to wait for it. That's the thing about all this shit is. Does it ever does, do you guys ever think about suicide? Yeah. Cuz there's like really two ways to go when you have a really bad situation in your life. One is to make that realization that this is horrible, but one day maybe it won't be, you know, and and I can get there. Um yeah. the other is to say I don't fucking want to put the work in anymore. I'm sick of it. I would rather just lay down and and be done. Yeah, but you have to remember, okay, let's think about Monday when we went to go see Louis C.K., which was one of the best things I've ever yeah, we been should t- to. Yeah, we should ever. talk about that, yeah. And, you know, as shitty as today is, is it so shitty that you would never want to have another day like Monday ever again? I don't know. Sometimes you feel that way. You what know? about what about the day when we drew all the birds? We had a, <laughs> we had a holiday this week called International Draw Your Bird do- Draw a Bird Doing Something Out of the Ordinary Day. It's the seventh year that I have celebrated, um, and it's exactly what you sound like. And we had I don't know we had like thirty something people participate this year drawing their birds and submitting them online, and and our and host pretty here was one of our main contributors. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah but when you you know. It's you don't feel you don't think that way though. Right in the in the wake of some kind of trauma, whether it's you know losing someone, you know, and it could be a death or like 
I've gone through a breakup that was just so painful that it felt like somebody died. You know, when you get cut off from someone you love, it can it's like whatever kind of trauma or getting arrested, getting beat up, you know, whatever the fuck you're it's like right in the shadow of that event, it's really hard to think Oh, I'll be able to enjoy a comedy show again one day. Yeah. You know, it's like you really just feel like it's going to be like this forever. Yeah. You know, and it, it's, it's, I've seen it, I've had it myself. I don't know if I'm just like a negative person who's more prone to depression and stuff than some people, but I oftentimes, I just can't see a way out of sad situations. And it takes me a really long time to even wake up to the fact that I should try yeah, to be happy again. You well, know? Yeah, but if you recognize that, then I think that's an important step. Yeah. Yeah, and I think probably everyone has had at least one of those. I've had more than one of those, but... More than one of what? Uh, the feeling where there's just like no way that that it's ever going to feel okay again ever and that there would ever be a way to get out of anything but honestly for me it just came down to the fact that i would rather believe that some that i would rather go through misery and just convince myself that something good will happen on the other end eventually than remove all doubt well and because when stuff is good like it's so good like yeah And it's weird to be depressed and also an optimist because I was that for a long time where I just couldn't help but feel lost and buried and and in a that there's just nothing I could get out of. But at the same time, just holding on to the fact that things are going to be good. I feel like I've been there, too. Um, I think sometimes and the Earthling would agree with this. I know if he was here, uh, you know, me and him years ago went through some really really rough times and uh it gets to a point (laughs) where thing once things are bad enough and your life is enough of a joke you know that like you start to detach in a certain way and you do start to get this like level of sort of like i don't know if it's just a natural defense kind of thing that happens and kicks in but like we both started to just get like you know what who cares anymore? Why don't we just have yeah. fun? It's and like our the, lives started getting better. And it's we, like, we started getting positive. People started wanting to be around us more. People started helping us get back into society and life, you know? And, like, I mean, we were both in a real bad spot. We were both pretty much, you know, had lost everything we loved in the world and didn't give a shit, you know? Um, and uh, Yeah, they lived in a really depressing basement room together and... It was, it was some low time. Yeah, it was. It was, it was some <laughs> low splitting time. a can of sardines because no one had I'm any money. Starving, man. Yeah, like, is and that, uh, is that literal? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Definitely. Like, I was there because he wouldn't let me be homeless. Basically, he said, "No, you." Got, I didn't want to at first. He said, "No, you got to come stay over here. You can't sleep in your fucking truck all the time." You know, and. uh I was just going to go live in the forest in my truck. That was my plan. (laughs) I'm not fucking good at decision making sometimes. But uh, (laughs) I was just going to go live in the forest in my truck. And he said, no, let's uh, live in a house and we'll try to get our lives was. It wasn't even a house. It was a room. Well, it was in a a room. It had a a bed, (laughs) a bed and a couch. And yeah. then the people that lived upstairs came down to do their laundry in the middle of all like the nonsense yeah. that was going on. So whatever. The point is, while we we're in the middle of this just undeniable low point in both of our lives, we uh, started to develop this optimism, maybe out of necessity. I don't know. But we were so yeah. depressed. But so just like, hey, whatever. You know, at least we're not dead. Things will probably pick up at some point. We'll just keep trying to party through this fucking you know well yeah and even today you know we were all pretty down sitting here all day and then we put a bow tie on the cat and then we all laughed That's at that true. for a that while was really cute <laughs> i didn't know and i was still at the time at that point i don't want to smile right now you know like i i don't i want to just lay on the floor and pound my face into the ground but i 
had to laugh at the fucking bow tie on the cat. It's like <laughs> something. And he was drinking from a wine glass. Yeah, yeah. He was a very high society. Um, cat with a bow tie. I don't know when that's not funny. Um, <laughs> I like having the cats around here. I know there's we, two cats the in the show, studio actually. with us. I kind of wish we could bring them to the studio from now on. Um, so you were saying, though, that you felt like really depressed but optimistic at the same time. Or do you think that's the same thing I'm describing? Whereas like things just get so bad that eventually you just realize, fuck it, what's the point of being sad anymore? Right. You know? It, it like it got to the point where my depression was so bad, I was too depressed to you even detach. spend you- the energy to be depressed you 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 just think fuck this worthless person that i am yeah i'm gonna stand over Let's here go break something <laughs> I'm, I'm, over, I'm gonna get away from myself yeah you know? that's just, exactly what it is yeah you get detached yeah and it's it's frustrating when you like just want to function like like a person but instead you're like two people inside of one person both yeah. trying to function at the same time and it must just be a natural i mean because like kids that go through horrific trauma, you know, they really neatly split into multiple personalities sometimes. And that's really, really easy yeah. to understand how you would compartmentalize pain that way. But I think even going through just hard times in life, like we're talking about today, somebody dies, some legal shit, something happens, whatever. Um, going through hard things in life like that and, and a prolonged state of sadness or anxiety can kind of do the same thing. It can cause you to split off into this other or your your personality can split in a way that you can handle it so i have the depressed guy and i have the guy that talks to people you know <laughs> like yeah. I have, it's maybe not healthy but i think a lot of us do it right i i don't i don't know any other way to really think of it other than just kind of splitting you know yeah is that what yeah you, and maybe it's not healthy but it's effective sure sure is um and I know you're not supposed to push feelings away, but sometimes you are supposed to do that, I think. <laughs> well, yeah. what else are you going to do? I Yeah, well, I, I, I've never understood. What do you do when you're sad? You either push it way, way down or it just hangs around. You well, I think you're it. supposed to acknowledge it and then ignore it. And then wallow and in then, it? No, and then move on. <laughs> and then and then move on by pushing it far, far away. Yeah, but yeah, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know. know. I don't know how people do it. So... I've had that thought a lot of times in life of, uh, what, yeah, I'm not supposed to be running from emotions. I'm supposed to be confronted. But, like, how long am I going to live? And how much do I re- <laughs> really need to deal with? You know what I mean? It's like yeah. if, if I can get to the finish line with with a little bit of duct tape over here and, and the air running out of my back left tire, you know what I mean? If I can yeah. get there... What's the difference? I don't know. Is that a sick way of thinking? I mean, is it? A, does it mean a lower quality of life while I am here? Not really. I don't think no. so. You know, so I mean, not compared to the way that some people live their whole life, you know, faking that they want to be married and living in a big house in the suburbs, and you know, they really hate their spouse, but they just keep keep going like that. So, I mean, that's that sounds worse to me. Sounds like uh, sounds like you've been there before. <laughs> <laughs> Don't oh, speaking from experience. Yeah. You can talk about um, it. Well, I mean, I wasn't. What I was thinking of when I said that is that someone told me recently that what is it? Okay, so out of all marriages, half end in divorce, and then of the other half, half of those people, so a quarter total, are people who are just absolutely miserable, but they're too scared to change what they have going on and then the final 25 percent are the people who are actually happy i'm like that sucks yeah that's that's a terrible statistic yeah and like i don't know there's so many i think there's so much pressure like i felt in certain groups of friends that i've had there is a lot of pressure to be married and have a house and have kids and if you're not doing that like you're not part of the then group. what are you doing yeah yeah and so when I was not doing that anymore, I kind of moved away from that because I just couldn't relate to people whose whole existence was focused on that. So, I don't know. Yeah, I've never had the, any of those thoughts in my life. You know, any of that kind of white picket fence bullshit at all, have you? Like, I did. 
I don't anymore, but I, I did. I, I've been so far from, like, I've wanted the opposite of that ever since. I mean, I still do, and I always have ever since I became an adult, you know. I've never had that thing of, like, feeling like I need that family and house, you know. Yeah. I, I just not even close. I, I don't even understand it, I, you know. Yeah, I mean, I definitely don't anymore, but either I did. Well, Although I, I never see, wanted kids. You know, I, I shouldn't say it like that because I could see having a family in a house, but not in the way that you're describing. Like right, it has right. to be Edward Scissorhands, you know, right, yes. perfect and stuff, you know. Um, <clears throat> I could see having like 50 dogs and uh, what, 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 are, what are those? Uh, An alpaca? Eh, whatever. A bunch of animals and kids. Uh, and we'll mix them all together in a big, <laughs> throw them in a big, throw pen, a big pen out yeah. back. Let them s- just let the animals raise throw the kids. Throw some feed at <laughs> yeah. them once yeah. a day. <laughs> I could do that. I, I, I would like to have a bunch of feral children that I just name, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just look at them and invite people over. I call that one JJ. <laughs> um, so he's just crawling around. <laughs> he's my son. <laughs> Those dogs helped raise him. Yeah. yeah. Woof. That's his dad, and yeah. that's his dad, and that's his dad. All right. Well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyways, we're talking about sadness. We're talking about uh, turmoil. We're talking about raising uh, a pack of feral children. Raising a pack of feral children. We're talking about getting arrested. We're talking about losing people you love. Uh, if you want to call in, you can just if you know my cell phone number. Or my cell phone number. Yeah, go ahead and call. We we are at my house. We don't have our normal phone system set up and shit. So, but we'll put you on speakerphone and hold it up to a mic. Yeah, Nothing if you want to call best. and talk about yeah. any, any of the shit. Yeah, or get in touch with us on Facebook and whatever. We'll we'll see it. Uh, so, yeah. What else? What else do you guys think I can uh, mention about my my problems here? I don't, oh, one thing that we said before we started recording was that when now it's all said and done, you're going to give the full rundown. Yeah, if you're just tuning in, we've been vaguely talking about an incident that may or may not have happened <laughs> uh, last night or the early hours of this morning, um, in which I may or may not have been apprehended by uh, people who may or may not have been cunts. Uh, <laughs> police and uh, yeah, I got uh, arrested last night. So it and we've been talking about that, going uh, trying to figure out exactly how much of the story I can tell. But I will promise you that I will get around to telling the entire story once all the fucking papers are filled out and and it's worth the wait. It's a pretty good story. It's I want to tell you guys about it because it's so fucking absurd. All the weird details of it. Um, you better write. We gotta write, yeah, them you all down write it down so we don't forget. Right, you should do it right now. All I can say is I've never seen a time where cops did less of their job than they than <laughs> I than I saw last night. Like it was incredible, and like the things I got away with were out of this world. That's what I'll say. For instance, let's say this, okay? Let's just say this. Let's, do, let's put it in a hypothetical. Hypothetically, when I was in the back of the car, that's <laughs> not putting it in a hypothetical. <laughs> When I was when I was in the if if I was, was in the back of the just car, just listen to me. <laughs> when I was in the back of the car, I thought I was getting some very serious charges, like way more serious than I got. So believe me, the story is worth sticking around for. I'll tell it one day when all this fucking blows over. But uh, I thought that uh, I may not see you guys again, like for a very long time. So I, in a way, I'm happy to be at least out. You know, yeah, and able to too. do this, considering that this all happened fucking eighteen hours ago. You know, yeah, uh, and it could be a lot fucking worse. I thought I was going in. I thought I was going into the dungeon, into the you know. I thought that I was going to the belly of the yeah, beast. Yeah, I thought I was going to the real place. I yeah. really did. Um, and when they told me what I was being charged for, I was like. Are you fucking serious? Like, and I, yes, and, and I, I was sir. like, I was like, what else? They're like, no, that's it for right now. I'm like, I'm gonna shut my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> stop talking shit to you guys. I guess. Well, what does that mean for right now? Does that mean that they could still bring more charges against you if they wanted to? Or <sighs> I don't know. 
Or do you think they just said that? Well, we have a lawyer here. Yeah, I don't know. I was wondering the oh, same thing. Some lawyer. I know. Better get a new lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, that's just while they're processing. Like, they always say that. Yeah. Because you know? then if you, like, throw a fit and, like... Because there's a million things they can yeah. charge you with. Yeah. There's a million little things, you know, so... And, and they always want to remind you that they could exert a little oh. more power if they want. Oh, well, that's it for I now. Could, I could give you an open container for that empty bottle of whiskey under your seat. Like, oh, yeah, well, thank you. $70 You're, ticket. What a Ooh. great man. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. And uh, I guess I'll, you guys are going to have to wait to hear any more. Yeah. Um, so. All right. Well, I guess we covered all that bullshit. We went to see Louis C.K. Yeah, we went Monday that night. That was great. Uh, all three of us here and uh, our un- unsolved mystery expert, David Box, was with us. Uh, we saw Louis C.K., Hannibal Burris open. That was a nice surprise. Yeah, that was a nice surprise. Uh, and we had uh, we had some pretty sweet seats. So oh, Andrea had just looked for the best available tickets and we ended up in our nice little box all to ourselves. Yeah, we had like a private box seat. It was uh, we saw where our seats were and I said, this is the fanciest thing I've ever done yeah. in my life and it was. We could have actually dressed up and, and we would have looked right. Yeah, it was yeah. in the Chicago yeah. theater so it's um, all like old timey and fancy. We got, to, yeah, we got to sit in one of those raised boxes, a uh, little pre- presidential assassination box yeah. Yeah. and um <laughs> And you do feel really fucking cool in there. Like, yeah. I don't know why is everyone was looking around at us? Like, I was how like did waving those guys at get people, those seats? yeah, signing autographs. Like, there was even a waitress walking around, but she never came to our she box. Never came to our <laughs> box. She went to other people's boxes. Uh, you know what? When they see you in the box, they think you got your shit together and you know what you're doing. Yeah. It's, we uh, probably but really like we, we just really had didn't belong there. we just had unsolved mysteries <laughs> expert david box waiting in line to buy two bottles of water for 40 minutes yeah. so you know <laughs> hello somebody's on the phone uh this call is being recorded and you're on our show who is this what's up buddy hey what's going on oh is this steve yeah it's steve oh uh, what's going on man how are you um all right you got busted for some shit yeah i can't really talk about it right now it's cool dude uh I'm just walking to the bar, and I was listening to the radio show. You guys sound real funny. <laughs> what, do you come? Mean, what do you mean? Like how? Uh, you guys kind of sound like you're real sad. Oh, okay. And, uh, Is the audio okay, though? Uh, uh, no, there's something funny about it. Uh, just your mic. Just if you're me? on mic. It's just your mic. Everybody else is fine. Hmm. All right, I'll try there's to like figure that out. a little buzz or something. Oh, really? Anyway. Okay. Whatever. So, uh, you guys are doing fucking the show from your bunker. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're in the, we're in the compound with the with the doors locked and the windows fucking shut and, <laughs> and the shutters closed and uh. Both of the cats are in here. Both with both the cats on our. On, both uh, cats. Yeah, on people's laps. Uh. Oh my god. And it's uh. That yeah, sounds like just really sour. You guys are fucking all sad. Well, Earthling had one of his good friends uh, die last night. And, oh, I'm uh, sorry to hear that. Yeah, so he's he's out, and that kind of bummed us out too. I I didn't know the guy, I don't For think, sure. but uh, it's a, it's just always sad when fucking people lose people. Well, you know? and you see your friends upset; it's not easy to see or hear, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, uh, sure. so he's got that, and then we got my thing, and you know whatever, yeah. fucking sucks. Dude, and then the whole fucking holiday shit, we're all fucking dragging ass on that shit, and then fucking. Somebody else has to die, and right. somebody else has to get arrested. Yep. And, like, you know, one of those things can be solved at least, right? Yeah, well, <laughs> I hope so. Wish. Uh, yeah, it's no big deal. Uh, I'm not a lawyer, uh, but I do know a lot about the law, and I got plenty of friends that are lawyers and all that shit. So I got to be like this. Uh, one way or another, uh, this is really, really great publicity for your fantastic Sunday evening overdose. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> because you fucking talk all sorts about it, and then, like, they bring it to fucking court, and then uh, you're like, listen to how nice of a guy I am. I'm like, hey, like, I feel bad about what I did. And uh, they're like, this guy seems like a pretty good guy. We're just going to let him go. And... You know what? Uh, the in a, in a rare in a rare circumstance, like I actually do feel bad. You know, I right. I, I was yeah. doing. I was. I do- can hear that, dude. I can hear it in your voice, dude. Like you I kind of feel like you're like uh, a little bit like taking something out on somebody that like you had like a whole bunch of shit 
and fucking maybe that person didn't deserve it that particular time. Plus, I've walked away from tons of shit like that. Where right, like, yeah, just not worth my time. Exactly. But occasionally, dude, I fucking I, no shit, dude. These fucking kids one time, like three years ago, something like that. Uh, maybe it was longer than that. But I was working out a lot, so I was like high testosterone and shit. And these kids fucking as I was going away from the gym, like threw something in my fucking truck. I fucking flipped the truck around like like in the movie style like and it was a Silverado it was a big one yeah I know exactly I what you mean where you, that fucking where you do that whip back what like, just like Went flips 180 degrees exactly exactly <laughs> yeah dude I fucking whipped this thing around these kids must have fucking pissed their pants cause I went <laughs> after them yeah only the thing was that they turned back into the gym's parking lot and I was flying in like a half ton truck and I crashed it into a fucking tree. <laughs> <laughs> right? Holy shit. All right. No shit. No shit. So angry at these fucking kids for fucking with me. Well, like, and I'm like, and besides the fact, like, I'm just like, why you got to fucking throw shit at my fucking truck? Like, pussies fucking driving by, like, <laughs> like, you know, I'm just fucking throw at some dude's truck. It's hilarious. Right? Yeah. You know, and that's what it always ends up being is. You know, there's, there's, you know, there's millions of assholes in the world. The one, time, the the one time you really you you stop and engage, you're actually fighting against yourself. Is what I was fucking talking of about course. earlier. Of you're, you're not, you're not fighting the guy. There's millions of guys to fight if you really want to. In those situations, you're attacking yourself because because of some deeper shit, you know. And right. otherwise, you'd be able to just let it go. Um, For sure. And that's why I'm upset like, with myself. Exactly. So what do I do? This is what happens. I fucking crash my car into this fucking, my truck into this fucking poor tree. No shit. And I cannot believe this fucking tree was still standing. It was just a little tree, but man, it fucked up my truck good. Yeah. And then I was like, what am I supposed to do now? Like, I was just chasing after some punk ass kids. Like, I'm just going to go home. Right? <laughs> and then call the police. Uh-huh. And I'm like, I still got to fucking make an insurance claim, right? So the fucking cop comes and... I think I might have even waited till the next day or something. I'm not really sure. I think I went to the bar and I was like, oh shit, what the fuck did I just do? And uh, when the cop came, he was like, why were you chasing these fucking, you know, kids, blah, blah, blah. I told him exactly what it was. He was like, why did you flee from the scene? And I was like, I don't know, like instinct? Like, why the fuck would you stay where you just fucking crashed into a tree? It wasn't like I was trying to hide something. I was just coming out for my fucking workout, but... Whatever, he was an asshole too. Yeah. They all are. Yeah. You know Fucking and pricks. That even when they're not, they are. Um Well he didn't give me a ticket. That was nice. Like he totally could have fucking given me a ticket for damaging, you know, uh, government property or some shit, but the tree fucked up my truck. Like it wasn't the other way around. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah, really, what the fuck is his problem? Um Right. It's just he was just there for an insurance. They probably sent the oldest guy over, they're like uh, this guy fucking sounds like he just crashed it into this tree. Uh, we'll take to go care of that, Wally. That guy. All right, you know well, I mean? uh, we got to move on to the rest of the show, I think. Oh, yeah, for um, sure. But I thanks. just wanted to call and be like, hey, things aren't so bad. It sounds like you fucking got to say some shit to some cops that you really wanted to. Yeah, no, that was satisfying. Yeah. So. You should play poker with him. Uh, no. <laughs> you know, I, no, you can totally say whatever you want at a poker game with cops. Yeah, no, that is true. Why, <laughs> do you do you do that? Occasionally. Well, you're going to have to fucking hook me up with that opportunity at some point. Because I'm a good For poker sure. player, too. I'd love to take some cops' money. Dude, it's um, so easy. You're so bad at poker. Anyways, have a good show, dude. All right. Take care. Love you. Love your show. All right, we love Go you, too, Steve. Yourself. See you later. All right, buddy. All right, old Steve Watermelon. First time caller. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> it's stupid, but like that made me feel a lot better. Well, and while you guys were talking, I looked at my phone and I had three different people send me messages being like, oh, you guys sound so sad. Like, I hope everything's okay. I mean, you know, we have a good little community well, going on here. I know. It's nice. And um, it's, <laughs> what was that? Was that? I think it's the cat, the cat knocking there? things right, off so, the counter. Uh, no. No, he went out. Oh, he can whatever. go through the closet. Whatever. So the police, <laughs> the police are here. Yeah. But I, uh, you know, I mean, it it does make me feel better to have people call in and you know, 
Yeah. And uh, actually give a shit about us. Um, I don't know, man. We'll get through this. As as uh, the Earthling said, the show must go on. And uh, I don't know. We're not even making any money yet. We're not really doing anything. We're just making an awesome fucking show. Yeah. That's all we're fucking doing here. Yeah, like I did when today we said, okay, we're n- earlier in the day we said we're not doing anything. And I was like, I don't even know what to do with my Sunday if I'm not going to the studio. I know, me too. I felt real weird all day. I didn't think I was going to do this show tonight until 7.30. I, I well. knew it in my head by like 6.30. I realized I am going to feel like a piece of shit if I don't do this, you know? Yeah. Um, so, uh, I don't know. You guys want to get into a few things? Do a little show here? Yeah, we could do a little show. Yeah, we, don't, show. we don't have the usual amount, but we got a few things. Who's got the, yeah. who's got the stuff? Um, Andrea, what's your favorite thing we're going to get into tonight? Well, I think the first thing that we should do um, before we get to anything that's my favorite thing is we have a retraction. Oh, we we reported some misinformation, Why and that's my that? fault because I'm the fact checker. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check up on this um, audio problem Steve was talking about, so... Uh, why don't you uh, handle that for a minute, okay? All right, cool. Um, we were so caught up last week in the excitement of uh, the story of the woman who was making fur coats out of neighborhood cats. And I'm sure anybody who listened last week will remember it. Um, anyone who didn't, the story was that a woman was arrested after she was caught having kidnapped and uh, neighborhood cats and used their pelts to make fur coats. And she um, had made, what, 30 coats out of 20 cats each? And then yeah. I, and then I she tried had to make a terrible joke uh, about uh, her making Cruella de Vil look like Jane Goodall or something. <laughs> yeah. and I was like, what the fuck was that supposed to be? <laughs> and then like you the tried it again joke. this week. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just re- re-acknowledging how terrible that joke was. So when I, when I heard it, on the on the playback, I was like, Ugh. <laughs> I just like cringed. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, um, officially that story is not true. We were duped into thinking it was, and uh, and that's not a. So that's our retraction. That was we are retracting that Sunday story. Sunday evening overdose retracts. It was still the, funny uh, to talk about, but it's not true. Well, we should have known that she couldn't have gotten away with killing five hundred neighborhood cats. First of all, six hundred. How many? Uh, yeah, six. How many? What kind of neighborhood are there in the neighbor? Yeah, yeah, where the fuck does she live? Yeah. Well, unless she was doing it for like sixty years. Yeah. In various neighborhoods. Years, yeah. All right. So that's our retraction. Now let's get into the show. All right. Here's a thing. I don't know if you guys are prepared for this, but uh, is Jurassic Park putting out a new movie? Oh yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I, I think find July. This, to this be July. Hilarious. Uh, <laughs> see, at this point, shouldn't they just be doing? I mean, it's been twenty years. They can't do a remake. You know why? Because the fucking movie still looks better than movies that come out now. Yeah. So I don't, which is something I don't understand. And it's no, on TV every day. And it's yeah. So I mean, nobody needs the remake. The remake is totally unnecessary. But for me, did you guys? Did somebody have like the plot? Yeah. Okay. Of this? So I, I just pulled it up. Is, this is to me. This is just getting. You know, I can accept a uh, a mad scientist uh, genetics experiment uh, type of movie where he makes dinosaurs and he thinks he's going to have a park and it, it goes wrong. Okay, okay. Then I can accept, okay, now we need to go back to this island because there's dinosaurs everywhere. <laughs> we got to figure out <laughs> what are we going to do with all these dinosaurs? You can't just leave them there. Just leave these dinosaurs there. And then what, And then the third one was like, like, now they're going to leave them there, but they're going to study them. No, no, no. Right? Wait, I think uh, isn't the second one they that... they stop the poachers. I think the Doesn't second one... to New York. Somehow, well, or? yes, the yeah, third the, one does. The but second one is King Kong, or is that the third one? The, the third the one, one is King Kong. Well, no, no, no. The third no. One, they take the King Kong's not in any. The third no, they one, the they go to New York. That, listen to me. They take the Tyrannosaurus Rex to the U.S. in a King Kong esque situation, Correct. and it gets out and runs around. But, but as I recall, that's King Kong. The second movie, <laughs> the second movie is surprise. The scientist was keeping a second island of dinosaurs. Oh, that's right. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the third one, they go back to that second island. See, I if I recall, any of the sequels. okay. The third one, and and that's the one where, uh, oh, what's his name? Non-believable scientist. Uh, Jeff Bridges. Jeff, no, not <laughs> Jeff Bridges. Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> Jeff Goldblum. Um, and you his, said Jeff Bridges. His, uh, I know. I always say Jeff story. Bridges. His daughter uh, stows away and goes to the island with them. That's the third one, right? And he's got like a black daughter yes. for some reason. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Like an Which adapted they, like, daughter. They, they never explain. Yeah. yeah. No, I think oh. they say she's adapted. Oh, okay. All right. So now 
It's been 10 years. Okay, so now Jurassic World, which comes out in June. So are you telling me there's going to be another park full of dinosaurs? Well, and the dinosaurs get loose again? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> 22 years after the events of Jurassic Park, Isla Nublar, which must have been the name of the island in one of the previous movies, okay. now features a fully functioning dinosaur theme park, Jurassic World, as originally envisioned by John Hammond. After 10 years of operation and visitor rates declining, in order to fulfill a corporate mandate, a new attraction is created to respark visitors' interest, which backfires horribly. Oh, who could have seen that coming? So I, I bet the Not dinosaurs me. get out. I bet the dinosaurs do get out. So <laughs> <laughs> now, who who could have seen? I, I, you know what I would like to see? I'd like to see Jurassic Park 5. We made a nice dinosaur park. Everybody came in. They paid for their tickets. Uh, they got some food in that food court that the raptors were fucking up. Remember that? <laughs> I remember they got, that. They got some food there. Uh, they went out and they saw the pterodactyls and the, uh, the long necks and, uh, and all of them. And, and they had a nice time. Took in a they, show. And they went home. <laughs> That would be a good movie. And actually, it, I would like to see what the... See, that's the thing. Is I like would they, like to just see a movie where they go through the park and you get to well, look at yeah, all the Yeah, I want to see what the park <laughs> is because like, I'm curious. What are these attractions? Am I just riding around in a truck? Because that's what it seemed to be in one of them. Yeah, or is there, in the Jeep. Are there rides like a roller coaster? And oh, I can't believe they're going to get loose again. This is going to be horrible. I hope nobody gets hurt. Oh, me too. Um, <laughs> so what else What else you got on Jurassic Park 4? This is so dumb. Can't they just make a new movie? Can't there just be a new story? It has to be another Jurassic Park. You know, Jurassic Park was the first thing where I had read the book first and then saw the movie oh, and, and, uh, yeah. and was just terribly disappointed. And then it was really? all downhill for the How rest of my life. How that? that? been disappointed by that movie? Even if you read the book, because I read the book too, probably after I saw the movie. But the book was different, you know. It had some differences, but the movie was fucking awesome. But I, but the How book, old were you I was, when the movie wait, came out? Was it, they said it was 93, right? So I was, I was 13, 14. Okay. And so I had read the book like a year or two before, and I really enjoyed it. And then I saw the movie, and it just... It, it was, the, it was my first experience with like a screenplay modifying the story from a book. And I was, it was just really, you know, the one you felt betrayed. Yeah, I did. First yeah. of all, in the book, um, what's his name? Malcolm, Jeff Goldblum's, I think Dr. Yeah, Malcolm. Yeah. And, uh, in the book, he was like really nerdy and smart. And then, um, in the movie, he, he was like a rogue beatnik scientist, right. you know, like yeah. scraggly like, hair. Yeah. He's he just was a fucking piece of shit. Wasn't he? Um, well, I, wasn't, I hated that character. Well, but you were supposed to, right? I mean, would he have like a so. shady no, personal I was, life? I think it was supposed to be endearing that he was like, you know, would trail off and, yeah, in those little quirky. like short monologues to himself and just like... A nutty yeah. professor Yuck. type? Yuck. That's all I could say. And then he played that character in like a bunch of other movies after that. Yeah. Then they kept... That kept being his, his style of just the like... Oh, of course. Well, you know, no one listens to me, and the, the dinosaurs are taking over the park. Well, blah, 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 blah. shut up, yeah. idiot! You go fucking do something. Get a gun. Get a harpoon going on. Sitting around, yeah. sitting around pontificating in a fucking <laughs> geo tracker. <laughs> fucking wrong with you. <laughs> I wanted a geo tracker <laughs> in 1993. Early 90s sarcasm. Yeah, really. All right. So what else is gonna happen? Well, I, in I'm I'm part trying four? to uh to well, pull this up here. Let's see. I just, uh, I'm really disappointed that they haven't beefed up their security tactics. Yeah. With, you know? <laughs> okay, so here. No, they do. They got a bigger electric fence. I, I watched the extended trailer for this. Oh, they there did? Is, there is a larger electric fence than in the first one. Well, because in the first one, it was definitely the size of the fence that really was yeah. like, I don't like, no, it was stupid fucking Newman. Uh, dis win. disabled the whole fucking thing, and then the stupid fucking Tyrannosaurus Rex threw his spaghetti arms on it. And he was just <laughs> trying to make down. a few bucks. <laughs> he didn't make enough at his data entry scientist job in Jurassic Land. Oh, do you Newman. remember? Do you guys remember when they start accessing the computer and it's like a three D model of a town that they're going through to get to the files <laughs> that they <laughs> do in the files? That's back when in movies they would be you, all right. 
let me just pull this up. No, nobody would ever touch a mouse. Yeah. But it would just be like, <laughs> hey, can we can we see the sub basement of uh, Sector C? <laughs> right there. Uh, and enhance. Now, disa- <laughs> can can we disable the electricity to that sector of the park? <laughs> Access denied. Oh, let me see if I can bypass it. <laughs> Like just yeah. all kinds of unbelievable <laughs> computing going on in yeah. that movie. Okay, I, on one of those screens that only has uh, black green and green display. Yeah. Samuel L. Jackson with a fucking extra long ash for some reason. Why do they always have the guy with the extra long <laughs> ash on his cigarette? You know, it, it makes you feel suspenseful. It's yeah, is that what it is? That I think must, so. Yeah, yeah I think so. Old, it must be an old. It's movie like an old trick. movie trick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. totally. Uh, because I tell you what. If I was in that <laughs> office with a guy that had ashes like that going on all the time, I'd say something. So with you and your fucking ashes, you think we're impressed? Yeah. <laughs> like you can hold a cigarette that still? What is that supposed to show Big me? Big whoop. Yeah. All right. So the new attraction in Jurassic World is a lab-grown dinosaur created by the park's geneticists. Aren't they all lab-grown? They, they splice the genes in this one i think yeah the last one they were like oh well we were able to just kind of patch things together but in the new one they like take the the, the dino dna and splice it with some frog frog Frog. dna like like modern frog dna that doesn't make any sense frogs are amphibians none of this has ever made any sense none of this has ever made any sense um oh here's what they did is they said oh man chris pratt is sure popular let's put him in something who the fuck is that that's the guy who's that's the main character the main actor why is he popular because he was in guardians of the galaxy which was really big what the fuck is that you know, it had a movie. raccoon like, like flying a sp- spaceship yeah he's like real hot right now so they're probably like, well, we shit. could make money with him if we put him in this 20 year old movie. Well, mm-hmm. Guardians of the Galaxy was a comic book. No, I don't cares? know. I, think. I want to talk more about. No, it doesn't matter. Oh, Dinosaurs. Okay. Um, but but why would you? I mean, I don't think that would work. I don't think you could just splice ancient DNA with that of a with modern frog. amphibian and get a bird. But why would you pick a frog? <laughs> why a frog is like little and doesn't do anything. Yeah. It doesn't seem like a good choice. Well, well, maybe they thought it would help make them docile. docile. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Frogs aren't docile, though. You pick them no. up, they bite you, they pee on you. They yeah, and you. they, like, jump real oh, fast. Yeah. They have teeth? They don't have teeth? They don't have what teeth. Are they that doesn't you mean they can't bite you. They, they gum you. Gum their mouth. You. Well, they've got, like, a little beak, you know? Do like frogs a, have a beak? Yeah, I don't kinda, think I've ever picked up a frog. It's definitely not like a... Is it, it's not just, like, gums. It's, <laughs> yeah. not, it's not, not just, like, an old man gumming yeah. your wrist. <laughs> <laughs> Give me flies. <laughs> no, it's, it's, you know, they can clamp on. Yeah. Like, they're like a lizard. You ever been bitten by a lizard? Oh, yeah. No. Yeah, it's like that. No. You ever been bitten by a lizard? No. What? what? So, no. She said that real like, oh, yeah. Speaking, of, speaking of getting bitten by a lizard, what else What else you got? This, so they have a new lab-grown dinosaur. Yeah. I mean, that's... that's What's going to happen? How does it get out? Uh, I don't know. We'll have to to wait watch it until June and see. I hope no one gets hurt. That's all I can say. Well, I'm sure it'll be an IMAX and we can have a Sunday evening overdose outing. Oh, yeah. We'll go review it for you guys. Okay. Well, I guess that's the the Jurassic Park. Anybody else got anything on that? Uh, I can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait until they actually open a Jurassic Park. Well, you know, at uh, Universal Studios, there's a Jurassic Park ride where you get in a little boat, <laughs> and you yeah, get, I've been on it. Yeah, you go through <laughs> some of the attractions in the Jurassic World. But those and, aren't. I mean, maybe they fooled you, but those aren't real dinosaurs. They're not. No, I want real dinosaurs. Well, then when I was on it, something went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we like broke off the track where the way we were supposed to be Tracy going. Just, no, Tracy just falls for the uh, like the plot line of the ride. Like, well, <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was on it. Something went wrong. An alarm went off, and they said the security. Yeah, were down. and then we had and to go. He, yeah, yeah. Like, we almost a got, came. They had to divert our boat, and then we went way up to a hill that like clicked up real slow, and then shot down like a chute and got wet at the bottom. I think it was supposed to do that. <laughs> yeah. See. She did. She's like, uh, you know, oh, I, I was. I, well, luckily they had the spare boat on a track set up next to me. Me and my friends bought tickets to this haunted house. Halfway through it, everything got fucked up. People with axes started running around, uh, <laughs> you know, ghosts jumping out and stuff. It was fucking nuts. We had to get out of there. Something was wrong. <laughs> Something was wrong. Um, 
Ooh, so let's not let the show die there. <laughs> so, I was just having my my memories. Is that destroyed. it on Jurassic? Or, That's uh, it on I Jurassic. I like talking about Jurassic Park. Yeah, I never thought about I, what a stupid movie it was before because it's so it's so good in so many ways. But it's really stupid. Well, and you know, when like, was when was the last time you watched it? The original Jurassic Park. Was well, the last I watched it a couple I've months seen ago. It recently Me enough too. that I was, you know, when you're a kid, you don't notice how shitty the acting is, especially the kid actors. You know, they <laughs> they were pretty awful. Oh yeah, they were really bad. I threw up. Yeah. Don't yeah. tell anyone. What? Why? <laughs> Why? You just got knocked off a cliff by a Tyrannosaurus Rex, and you're embarrassed that you threw up. Those children deserve to be eaten by yeah. dinosaurs. That scene was absurd. Yeah, and uh, you know that scene when they're climbing the fence and they're just doing it so agonizingly slow, like oh, they don't God. understand they're running for their lives. And what kind of that was like? A, he's like a ten year old boy. What kind of little fucking queer can't jump off of a <laughs> fence from like ten? You know what I mean? He's no, like, oh, I can't. I can't. I'm scared. Why don't you keep? What, th- uh, that scene also made no sense because why didn't he just climb down lower he stood in he had already <laughs> climbed over the top of the fence and then he just froze about 75 yeah. percent of the way down and he could have just easily climbed down fucking four or five more rungs of that stupid fence <laughs> that doesn't even work fucking if newman can take it out you know that and he could have climbed down just like five more feet but he stood there for like 20 seconds just like i'm scared Ooh. Um, what am I supposed to do? Jump! You have to jump! No, he doesn't. No, Just he climb doesn't. down. <laughs> They're going to turn the... Climb down! Oh, no, but you they didn't even know down. they were going to turn the electricity back no. on either. And and then right on three, he gets blasted off of there. Yeah. Stupid little fucking... He should have uh, just jumped. Stupid little ginger idiot kid that he was, well, wasn't he? Was he ginger? I don't I know. I think he was. Ginger. I don't think so either. I think he was. I think he was brown hair yeah, whatever he should have he was meek he should have been he a was, ginger he was, he was meek and unimpressive like a ginger well <laughs> you shouldn't bring children to a dangerous dinosaur attraction right. before yeah it's maybe ready. it wasn't really his fault well um, but still they had they, they had uh you know they had to see their their grandfather john hammond uh wasn't it their yeah yeah. So, yeah he had a nice hat as i recall yeah and he yeah. uh he was a great granddad. Classic uh, scientist hat. But so, and then they, and then they get caught. That's when. They, all right, never mind. We could just keep receiving. Okay. So, anyways, I did find uh, about <laughs> Jurassic World. The some of the plot of the movie. <laughs> some of the attractions at Jurassic World um, are a dino petting zoo. Oh, that's a good idea. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure nothing goes wrong there. No, no so one's wait, arms get uh, cut and off. in the context of this movie, are they now? Are they in a world that like? Does this continue from the last movie, or is this a well? Whole it new says movie it's no. Like, it's been in operation for ten years. So, so, so people theoretically who are going to the park oh. would know that three other times dinosaurs have gone nuts <laughs> and killed, killed everyone. Yeah. But at so, the end, attack New York. At yeah. the end of three, don't they take like the baby T Rex back? And I think that the park is like up and running at the end of three. I, I never saw remember. any of the sequels. So, but okay. So then there's also a hologram info center where you can learn about the methods they're using to create dinosaurs. And then there's a ride Wait, called. Is this in the movie? Yes. Okay. Yes, <laughs> in the movie. And then there's a ride <laughs> called. Um, but he's like a dino petting zoo. <laughs> Let's go. A uh, um, A ride called the Gyrosphere, where you ride around in the wild to get up close to the dinos. I bet something's so that's gonna go wrong. Like the, the jeeps. Right. Yes. Okay. So. So. Well, you know. If we're being completely honest, even after all the cautionary tales of the Jurassic Park series that we've seen, if in real life they opened a dinosaur park, there's no way I'm not going to that. <laughs> there's no way I'm not going to go see some dinosaurs. What was with that stupid fucking lawyer in the first movie, too? The fucking sleazebag lawyer who, first of all, wears a suit to a dinosaur park for some reason. Oh, yeah. he's Because you he know eaten. why? Because he's yeah. a lawyer in a movie, so he has to have a suit on or you won't know he's a lawyer. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, so that's to be fair, thing. everyone should have just listened to him. <laughs> yeah, that's true. He had the right idea the whole time. But then he goes and tries to take a shit while the T-Rex is standing right there. And the, th- the thing, if you remember that scene, I think he actually had his pants down on he the did. toilet. Yeah, I think he did. Because so, at first you're like, oh, he's just hiding in there. And then he and then he was sitting on the toilet. Right. Yeah. What a fucking stupid scene that was, too. And then the kids, you know, by the way, too, you you got like your kids, you're in a flipped over fucking little Jeep thing, whatever it is. You're, you're you know, practically drowning in the mud you see a lawyer get bit in half and remember how he bit him in half and then like threw him up in the air yeah, and like chomped and the rest him, of him yeah. down and like um <clears throat> yeah that was cool that was awesome 
And uh, you know what I always thought about that, too? Did the T-Rex taste the shit on the outside of the guy? Because, like... <laughs> he didn't care. If you eat a guy whole, I bet it just blends in, you know? Yeah. But, like, if there's shit on the outside of a guy, doesn't that make it kind of unpleasant yeah, probably. to eat him well, like that? And a T-Rex has a really good sense of smell, right? I Wasn't would that, like, kind of their thing? So that means that he would have, like, really tasted that. Okay. So... I'm just trying to think of other stupid parts of that movie. Cause I just never, it was some, such a movie that we loved so much as kids, you know, that it, it just never occurred to me as an adult to realize how dumb it was. You yeah. Know? Like, they literally, uh, there is a line, um, which I thought was uh, like, a, like had been parodied or exaggerated over time. But when I rewatched Jurassic Park as an adult for the first time and they say, well, Hold on to your butts. Hold on to your butts. <laughs> that was Samuel like, L. That's Jackson. That's like a thing that somebody would actually say. That's when he's. Or... That's when he's trying to turn on the the uh, security system again, <laughs> yeah. right? I, I don't Hold recall. Hold on to your, your butts. butts. That's when he had the yeah. long ash on his cigarette. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, but, for what it's worth, I don't remember bitch. actually anyone actually saying that in the early nineties. You're probably the only only one who would. Right. I don't. I don't. I don't remember anything. As the senior member of the crew here, I don't know yeah. what slang was like. I have a. Uh, I don't think anyone would have said that. No. If they would have, they probably would have been made fun of. Can you or ma- they were just quoting. People like, would have said it maybe after the movie, perhaps. But yeah, yeah, but but that like that's the kind of stuff. And I was just talking about this with somebody. It's amazing that they're they were able to create uh, such timeless visuals, and that uh, the dinosaurs still hold up to today's. CGI and you know you could release that movie today and it would still look good by today's standards um but they made the plot and the dialogue so D- unrelatable yeah it's so hey what's up man hey you're on the Sunday evening overdose <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> yeah, I've always yeah. wanted to be famous we're talking about Jurassic Park are you listening to the show I am not okay that's why I can talk about Jurassic Park all you want <laughs> uh really yeah, I mean, I've always been a big fan of Velociraptor. As long as they can stay, as long as they stay in their containment, you know, I think. Well, so now what Doctor. do you think? We're talking about whether or not in the new Jurassic Park 4 movie that's coming out, do you think the dinosaurs are going to get loose, or do you think they'll uh, they'll have the security shit figured out by now? Oh, no, I, I'm pretty sure they got it all figured out. Yeah. Also, <laughs> every, everything's been ironed out. It's I'm been 10 sure years. Gonna have a nice, good safari kind of thing. It should be fine, I'm thinking, by now. They know they know what happens when the dinosaurs get loose, you know. They got they, that uh, under control. They we've all seen the horrors. Um, but yeah, we're also talking about some. Of, what what do you think is the stupidest part in the first movie? Um, Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> oh, Jeff Goldblum. That's his name. Wait, what was I calling him? Was I calling him Jeff Goldblum? Yeah. Oh, okay, good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we. I hate fucking. I I hate that character. Oh, he's the worst. He's and it's not it's not funny. It's like not clever. He's just an annoying douchebag in a in what did I say? Just pontificating in a geo tracker instead of doing something. <laughs> exactly, leaving the kids out there alone. Fucking moron. Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. No. And who? What kind of person doesn't like kids? That's the other thing. He's like dressed all in black, like he's some kind of fucking. Uh, yeah, like he's Johnny Cash of dinosaurs. Like he just came from a poetry <laughs> slam to the dinosaur island. And he's like you know. I don't. I don't enjoy kids. Like all I like is uh, cappuccino and hair gel. Um, <laughs> well, it was the nineties. Yeah, and yeah, cappuccino I mean, was a Sam new Jack fad. Really it was a cappuccino. <laughs> a cappuccino. Um, so yeah, man, we're having a weird show tonight. We had a bunch of we were we had a really sad first hour, and then we decided to talk about Jurassic Park to cheer us up. But uh, I think it's working. Yeah. Yeah. So I just wanted to throw you on the show for a few minutes. I'll have to call you back later, though. Yeah, maybe call my agent next time. All right, yeah, I'll get in touch. <laughs> I'll get in touch with your people later on. All right, guys, have a good show. All right, thanks. Bye. That was Tim out in Elmhurst. A little Jurassic Park call. I called him. So. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know he was a Jurassic Park expert? No, I thought he was calling before I missed a call from him. I thought he wanted to be on the show, but uh, just calling to say uh, hi. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I don't know. I feel like I've gotten that out of my system now. All right. Well, more to come on that in June as well. That'll yeah. be a big update. Lots of updates we from this show. Wait then. Until June for that. June twelfth. Uh, It'll be here before you know it. Maybe we can get an advanced copy if we promise to review it on the show. Maybe. Who do we talk to about that? Does anybody know? 
No, but there's, no one cares about us. No one's gonna, like, <laughs> I'll take a note. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah. Hey, look, we'll review it for our fucking... Look, what do we have? Six. Six listeners. We'll review it for our six listeners. No, I don't think so, sir. <laughs> fucking, yeah, we'll those. tell them to see it. Um, <laughs> all right, what, what else we got? Right now we got a cat getting stuck over here. One of the uh, perils of the home. Don't ruin sitch. the show, please. What, what else do well, we have? Well, let's talk about while we're on the subject of big lizards or giant birds. Um, how I don't, about that I don't giant have a computer snake? or anything in front of me, so I got to go off you guys. You got to help me out. All right, so we got um, a story about a snake this week. So there, let me just pull this up here. There was a, um, a California woman was cleaning an office toilet and she was plunging it because she noticed the water level was off and a huge five foot six inch long Colombian rainbow boa slithered on out. Do you have any idea how much I worry about a Colombian rainbow boa coming out of the toilet and now <laughs> it fucking happens? Why well, right, no? Well, it says this. The story says this is an urban myth come to life. Oh, it totally is. No, yeah. <laughs> I've had pl- so many times sitting on the toilet, thinking like, "Fuck, what if a giant spider or snake like crawls out and fucking bites me on the nuts?" Well, the best part is so after I think about it all the time after <laughs> it really crawled think. out, uh, the woman closed the door with scotch tape and called animal services. Closed it with scotch tape, like taped. So it wouldn't crawl under the door. Well, I don't. I I was picturing this being in like a bathroom stall in no, like no, no. a. She closed it with scotch tape, so if the snake got out and then closed the door to cover its tracks, she would be able to tell, tell that it is broken. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I assume this was a multi-unit bathroom, and she like closed one of the stall doors, but that doesn't make sense because you could just slither out the bottom. So maybe yeah. she closed the main door with scotch tape. Maybe it was some sort of swinging door, and she wanted to keep it shut, and scotch tape was all that was in the office. Yeah. Now, okay, so a five-foot-six snake sounds really big, but that's really not that big. I have a five-foot pet snake. He's, yeah, he's like five feet long. Um, and he could not kill me. Not in a million years. Why? Because I'm stronger than him. He's a wuss. Because he's a wuss? Yeah, well, you might just have a shitty snake. Okay, now just to hold on because my snake is not shitty. I don't know. I've seen it. It doesn't no, look you that great. Yeah, you yeah, don't I've, know him. I've seen pictures of it. It doesn't really look that great. No, he's great. Hi, Brainy. I've seen. He's <laughs> listening now. <laughs> it's a fucking creepy relationship you have with that snake. He's too. one of the six listeners. You guys like talk to it like it's cute and everything. It it's is cute. Fucking disgusting. He has personality. Yeah. Anyway, he would. Uh, there's. He's too small to hurt a human being, which leads me to believe that this snake is probably also well, too small to hurt a person. And this snake was underweight shedding, but Aww. it bit the handler that was dispatched Good. to fetch it. <laughs> and then the owner, it was reunited with its owner, and the owner apologized for any anxiety that the snake escape may have caused. But then he and his landlord agreed that the snake would be better off staying at a friend's house. <laughs> <laughs> So the snake went for a slumber party. Yeah, so you know, just, just get, get out, out of get out of town of for a few days. Yeah. So, so well, yeah, that's pretty weird. Yeah, so I can honestly say I've never actually been scared of a snake coming out of my toilet. You know what I was? Scared I think of? about it literally every other day. I'm not kidding you. For years. Well, I, th- I don't know why. I got it in my head one day that something could jump out of the toilet and like bite my genitalia off i will tell you exactly what it is it's the episode of the x files where there was a monster in the toilet that was coming up and sucking people's blood out of their butts while they sat on the toilet and that's what i I don't think about a snake i think about that it's like a it was like a (laughs) the giant mutated mutated fluke yeah yeah, yeah. exactly so i think about a fluke coming out of the toilet that might be where that came from in my yeah. head because I was a huge X-Files fan. I forgot how disgusting that show was. Yeah. It always, Have you it, ever watched that as an adult? No, no, not really. Yeah, you should. But is the acting terrible, though? Oh, it's real bad. Yeah, it's yeah. so, so cheesy. But they, it's it, some stuff is genuinely you, <laughs> still scary. You don't think David uh, David uh, Duchovny comes across <laughs> as, a, uh, as like a convincing, stoic FBI agent? <laughs> you don't think he pulls that off? 
No. Oh, but he's <laughs> so smooth, you know? <laughs> nobody could <laughs> nobody could ever be that smooth. And he has a flip du- phone. Nobody but Duchovny. And like a squinty look at he's you. A, yeah, he's, he's always looking into the sun. Yeah. He's a guy that I feel like you could never just refer to him by his last name as like a sign of reverence or respect. You know what I mean? How you say like Heston or you say fucking, uh, I don't know, who are some old showbiz people? Uh, Sinatra, Redford. Sinatra, right? Yeah, you never would just say Duchovny. That would not happen. <laughs> I feel like you know, It'd be like which Duchovny? Yeah. <laughs> oh, David. Now, Jillian Anderson, she was a fine piece of a. <laughs> <laughs> if you get my drift, and I think you do. All right. <laughs> she um her her acting is a little more believable. Yeah, she could cry. She could fake cry. She did it like every five or six weeks. Yeah. That's not easy. That's that's not true. It's not easy. easy to pretend to cry every two months. Yeah. Um. <laughs> the only episode I remember is one where they went into a house and couldn't leave. And it was like a Halloween episode. No, 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 no. They were on a ship in another no, dimension. No, that was the Bermuda Triangle one. Yeah. No, this one was one. like a house because it was very similar to an episode of Buffy, which is why I remembered it. <laughs> I hate when my show is all girls. <laughs> God damn it. How did this happen? All right. You want to move on to sharks? Sure. This happens sharks. once in a while. I get stuck with a bunch of girls on my show. All right. So uh, a shark tried to eat Vietnam's internet. It attacked what the, the internet. Does that mean? I'm going to put the video up on the Facebook. So right there's now. a big underwater cable that, you know, makes the internet go so to Vietnam. So sharks are actually attempting to take Sabotage. out our, our lines of communication yes. at this point. Yes. And there's... <laughs> it's just biting the internet. Yeah, there, there's, huh? there's a very <laughs> clear picture of I the like shark picture, going yeah. to town on it. So. That's funny. Um, shark bit the internet. So what did, they, what did they say about that? Did it do any damage? So it, it throttled connections in Vietnam, causing millions of its residents to deal with the internet that was either incredibly slow or frustratingly sporadic. That mic is a directional mic. So it points at... You need to point it at... Like, in front of where you're talking. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. So, slowness and disruption. So, he actually had an effect. Yes. He uh, he made a hole in it. So Do they have to repair it? Um, yeah. So. Is it leaking the internet out through the hole? I think is, it's probably... That, that's that's what slowed it down, is that it was leaking out. And so, it slowed right, down. Right. Uh, a hermit crab crawled out of its shell and went into a pop-up bed and started hobbling away. <laughs> <laughs> Uh oh, this isn't good. <laughs> it's one of those, uh, one of those like cameras, like from the BP spill, is down there. You know, just, <laughs> yeah. just wa- wa- just watching a bunch of shitty videos of people getting hit in the head by shovels, fucking fall out of a pipe. <laughs> yeah. There goes more of the internet. Boy, look at her. <laughs> uh-huh. Clickbait headlines pouring out all over the place. Oh, good one. Wait till you see this. Yeah, the internet sucks now. It used yeah. to be a lot better. That shark was actually on to something, I think. Well, it's interesting. They're getting more and more sophisticated in their attacks. And something tells me that that's one of the really smart sharks, and he just couldn't convince a lot of the other sharks to do it with him. But uh, this is just a sign of what's, what we're going to have to deal with in the future yeah. with these uh, the greatest threat we face as Americans and as fucking as a species, really. What are you What are you showing me here? This is the actual video of the shark. Oh, so there is the, a video of this. There is a video. Uh, you yeah. put it on the Facebook page. It's up. Yeah. Oh, okay. There he is. Yeah, he comes right up and just bites it. Why? He knows what he's doing. That's like a that's a calculated attack. Yeah. It's what not like idiot. he thought it was food. This is a dumb shark. It's a fucking stupid idiot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, another is he sophisticated well, or stupid? yeah, another smart care. shark <laughs> so um, show to get through. <laughs> so scientists claim that there's a great white who curtailed his migration pattern to remain within the Geograph Bay, um, where it, there's a lot of surfers and whatnot. So they think that that shark has recognized there's potentially easy pickings when there's a lot of humans around and stopped its traditional migration pattern to stay in that area they they call it loitering the shark is officially loitering instead of moving along yeah sharks so and there's a big seal colony in the area as well which is another popular shark snack oh yeah they love them seals which seems like 
I, if I were a shark, wouldn't it seem? Wouldn't it seem like you would just go? Like, aren't there so many millions of small fish that it would just be easy to just swim around with your mouth open? Yeah, yeah. just chop up some fish. Like they're they're going after things that are like more than half the size of them. You know, <laughs> that's yeah. fucking nuts. That's like, yeah. I mean, you don't see animals on the land single and you know you see packs doing it but like you don't see like single animals hunting things that are like almost the same size as them really yeah. do you i mean no i don't think well so. i don't know we saw your cat hunting hunting a skunk oh that's true he tried to fucking hunt a skunk and attack it yeah they're about um, the same size yeah, he got sprayed <laughs> <laughs> he did that's how he got uh, dyed orange yeah he was cleaning with hydrogen peroxide <laughs> and then and then stay out in the sun <laughs> until yeah. he dried we made him stay outside for like two days <laughs> and we came home and he was orange <laughs> and he it was all orange He's a, he's a black cat, by the way. If you're uh, if you're wondering why that's funny, but all right, so go ahead. Uh, we got no more sharks. All right, and then shit. we got one more here. Um, a tourist was bitten in the Bahamas. Thirty uh, four year old Lacey Webb Martin and her husband were swimming in about eight feet of water during their annual trip to the Bahamas when she said she was bitten by a shark. She was so calm that I thought she was kidding, Britt Martin told Local 10 News. So I swam over there, and she pulled herself up on the boat, and she was missing half her back. Whoa. Yeah. The bite oh, was... fucking Christ. Which yeah. half? I, it doesn't say. The uh, front? So <laughs> she was missing the front half of her back. Um, so... The shark attack guy. Just gives <laughs> gag interviews. To the, <laughs> <laughs> the bite was so severe that she fainted as she the was being pulled back out of the boat. really topsy-turvy. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we pulled her up onto the boat and just wrapped her in a tourniquet with towels. And luckily, there was a doctor on one of the other boats who came over, radio the medics, blah, blah, blah. So uh, the doctor said that her remaining calm throughout the attack is what kept her alive. So, How do you tourniquet half of somebody's back? I assume it was just the whole torso was tourniqueted. You bend, you bend their leg up, <laughs> back around them, and just fucking tie it around. Yeah. <laughs> You're dead, lady. <laughs> that's that's you, it for you. It, yeah. So, so uh, all right, is that it for sharks? That's it for sharks, that's but you know, sharks. they're right. getting oh, smarter. They're taking some steps. Yeah. yeah. What else are we going to get through here? So, uh, oh, let's talk about the lottery jerks. What is this? Uh, a man purchased a scratch off ticket, um, which was good for it, won $500,000 according to what was printed. And then he took it back to the convenience store, and the guy, like, scanned the barcode on there, you know? And he was like, oh, no, it's not a winner. And the guy was like, well, look, it's a winner. It says so right here. Well, so so just a little more detail on that is that he had a, you know, on some scratch-offs, you can win more than one um, prize per ticket. Sure. So he had one for 250000 and then another for 250000 But the problem was is that the maximum prize for that game was only 250000 so the the lottery company said it was a misprint. So oh. so he called and complained, and they said, "Oh, sorry, that was a misprint. Um, you can't have that money." Yeah, but you're not even so, entitled to one of those. So when yeah, the guy, and, the, and when the, the guy at the store, I thought I thought you, that it was going to be the guy at the store was like fucking with him because he wanted to keep the ticket for himself. But no. So when he scanned it at the store, it really came up as a loser. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, That's so then, fucked up. and this is in New Mexico, by the way. And so Holy the, uh, shit. can you imagine that? No, no. <laughs> have, I, I, that's the worst. I would thing have a ever. fucking heart attack immediately and just had start shooting blood out of my ears. So, <laughs> so what the, um, the lotto commission or whatever they are offered him was like a hundred lottery bucks to use to spend or to spend on additional lotto tickets. And, you know, so they're saying he could take his chances on a hundred more, but they're not giving him anything else. And I actually yeah, heard... They're also not giving him any real money. Yeah, right. And Only I, lottery money. I uh, I heard this guy on the radio earlier this week, and he said that they told him they were going to give him those hundred dollars, and then uh, they still haven't, and he hasn't heard anything else about that. And they told him that perhaps he'd have better luck going after the printers of the ticket. And so he called there and then uh they told him sorry we don't deal with customers directly you have to go through the lotto commission so i heard he was thinking about suing but yeah what do you do in this fucking situation because like you're not entitled to win two hundred fifty thousand dollars probably by any law but like there should be a law against like printing that ticket i'm sure there's and then not because like you're not it's not the they don't they don't sell the game as as Hey, scan this barcode and see if you win. They sell the game as scratch this off, and if you see these numbers, you win. Right. And there it has says to be... that. Doesn't that say that in the fucking rules? Like, how can they get away with this? 
there has to be some implication of a contract with consent on both ends. It has you the make rules the and instructions exactly. on the ticket. It's That's like, what I'm saying. Yeah. Like that has to be. And from a legal standpoint, that has to be considered a contract because right. because you say, okay, you purchase this from us, you agree to these rules, and we also agree to these rules. Do you have like a scratch off ticket lying around? Around uh, here there's anywhere? probably nah. You know what? Maybe not. I don't know. Well, I'll see if we. I take wonder a break. if we Maybe can I'll read the fine one. print. I'm. I, I'll mm. bet that they have a line in there somewhere that's just like real subject to change at any time, no matter what. They oh, well, well like here. This, so know? it yeah. said that in the fine print in New Mexico, it says the NMLA is not responsible for erroneously printed or mutilated tickets. But I mean, how does this even happen? That's fucking insane. Yeah, it's just. Uh, but I don't know, the guy... When so they I, offered him what? A hundred lottery <laughs> credits, basically, so he could buy a hundred more lottery what? tickets. Or $52. Shouldn't they right. just give him $250,000 and say, hey, look, that's the that's well, the maximum prize. We had a misprint, so we'll honor the two hundred fifty grand. I mean, Jesus Christ, it's how not much like do they, they don't make? have it. How yeah. much right. do they make on a run of a certain game? They must make millions. Well, and they've got to yeah. have some insurance policy for this sort of thing. Yeah. I can't believe that. It's fucking bullshit. Yeah, but the guy Probably I heard him jerks. on the I would radio. Sue the he shit out of them. Well, he I'd was sue them for way more than five hundred thousand. Emotional I distress. I sue the shit out of them as like you're gonna sue them really hard. Like when you're <laughs> fill, like I'm filling out the paperwork, just jamming the pencil <laughs> yeah. in the fucking desk. <laughs> oh, this fucking is liable for this, <laughs> you know, just growling in the courtroom. She always show up in the courtroom, just like messy hair, fucking torn clothes, just like screaming at the judge, like I am suing the. Fuck fuck out of this guy right now <laughs> it's going down uh, well the guy seemed good natured about it in spite of his not winning any money so good for him i, I guess would not be good natured. no i would no, not no. if i thought i had five hundred thousand dollars and then i had one hundred dollars worth of lottery tickets instead i would be I would not be good natured. Well, because you know what happens if you buy a hundred dollars of lottery tickets, you maybe win like a hundred and five dollars. Oh yeah, if you're lucky. Yeah. yeah. You maybe win. Uh, with my luck, it's like you maybe win twenty six dollars back from that. And then you buy twenty six more lottery. Yeah. Tickets. And then you don't have anything. <laughs> uh, one of my <laughs> friends was living with some people over the summer, like in college, and. One of her roommates had collected all the money for rent and then decided instead of paying the rent, she would just go buy like $500 worth of tickets. Just scratch off tickets? Yeah. Yeah. She didn't win it back. (laughs) (laughs) Believe it or not. (laughs) That was a bad investment. So, uh, all right. right, So, move on. We're a little... uh, disorganized here today but we got uh, oh the oldest time capsule in the u.s so the uh sam adams and paul revere i like this thing uh sam adams and paul revere couple of terrorists basically uh by our by today's standards standards, yeah and um they what this is after the revolution they decided 1795 yeah yeah yeah. so significantly after i guess so this is already they had the fucking congress set up and they're they're doing biz in in uh, Philadelphia, I think, at that time or whatever. And uh, it was in Boston. Oh, where this well, yeah, was. with yeah. the capital, I think, was Philly, whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, so, what uh, what did they put in there? So, well, first they said they had to loosen the screws for about four or five hours before they could get it open. This so that must have been opening it, must yeah. have been exciting. And uh, so they so they, they like pu- <laughs> four or five hours of suspense. Yeah, they, they publicized it like, oh, we're gonna open the fucking thing up, and everybody shows up like. Does anyone have a Phillips head? Hey, what's going on over there? We're unscrewing it. Just just loosen it up. Do you do you think I have time to get coffee before it actually opens? Uh, I don't know. We're pretty close. (laughs) So, anyway, so uh, when they opened it up, they found a newspaper. Uh, that was in very good condition, but it was not possible to tell the dates or what news was being reported. <laughs> yes, I, I read that too. Why? So how could it have been in good condition? <laughs> right, yeah. What did they mean that by that? That sucks. Do you know how cool it would be to have a newspaper from fucking 200 and whatever years ago? Like, yeah, I, I just, I don't understand what that means though. Like it's in good condition, but we can't read it. But you can't really look at it. Right. <laughs> Which yeah. is pretty much the only thing you can do with it. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, sure but maybe nice. maybe good condition for a 230 year old newspaper is just that it's 
not, I, I not like, dust. Yeah, you can tell that it's a newspaper. Yeah. Yeah. So then there were also twenty four coins in various denominations dating from the sixteen fifties to the eighteen fifties, which is confusing because they buried it in seventeen ninety five. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they were just like maybe it went into the spot where they took it out of in seventeen ninety five. Maybe they added things to it. I don't know. Or over time, time travel. And then finally Maybe we're just like, okay, Wait, that's it. What did I miss there? What is is it, the, it said the coins and it dated from the 1650s to the 1850s, but it had been buried in 1795. So how do they have coins from 50 years in the future? No, I think this article also says that it was opened once before and then replaced. Oh, okay. So and then, then it could have like been put back okay. in the same spot with most of the same stuff. Okay. You open it like 60 years later. That's kind of lame. Yeah. Right? Oh. Um, and then there was a silver plate at the bottom that contained information about the laying of the cornerstone box, which was done by then Governor Samuel Adams, assisted by Paul Revere. So, and it was below the Boston State House. So, so there you go. That was. Uh, what else was in there? That was it. Was it? Newspapers and coins. Yeah, fucking well, they, lame. they Pretty probably lame. thought that the newspapers might be. I wonder if that Readable. was like a significant event event that they had placed in there that now we can't see. Well, yeah, like the whole idea was just what was printed on the newspaper. Right. Like, we got to make sure they know about this. <laughs> like, yeah. Lock a few of these away. Well, what would you put in a time capsule? Me? Nothing. I would. I need everything that I have, pretty much. <laughs> I wouldn't fucking give away anything. I, you don't want to know what? Here's something. Okay, everybody. Um, <clears throat> if you're a student at Downers Grove North High School, you can go, and if you're out of weed, uh, you can go to the, what is that shit? The inside place where you do sports? Uh, the field house? Field house. Go to the field house. And the long jump pit that's closer to the wall, somewhere in that pit is buried a time capsule. And I think it's an Altoids box. And in there is a hitter and some weed and some notes and drawings from me and my friends. <laughs> and I think it's been long enough to put that out there. So it's, it's been, been like 10 years? It's been fucking 12 years at least. That's a pretty good time capsule. 12, 14 years because we were probably 16 when I put it in there, yeah. So uh, there you go. If you uh, there's probably three or four hits of weed, and a little hitter, and uh, some some. I think I don't know. Probably threw like a guitar pick, some weird whatever we had in our pockets and shit, you know, and some notes and stuff, and yeah. So I did that. But other than that, um, <clears throat> yeah, nothing. I need everything. All right. Yeah, I don't really have anything that I think anybody would be interested in. Yeah, I'm, nothing's coming to mind. All right, idiots. No. Let's All move right. on to the next. Anyways, thing. okay, so that's why we don't have a time. So capsule. speaking or of the past, uh, <laughs> speaking of the past, a uh, five hundred thousand year old engraving rewrites view of human history. Oh no. It's so a, it's a palindrome, isn't it? It is. A team of researchers have discovered what appears to be the oldest known engraving in human history. Uh, they it's are like, is what an amulet. Well, the geometric marks were found on a fossilized mollusk (laughs) shell that dates back approximately 500,000 years. Oh, okay. So, uh... What language is is it printed in? Well, it's like a design... It's a zigzag set of grooves cut into it by a sharp implement such as a shark's tooth. Yeah, but it's, it's it's an actual phrase in some language and it's a palindrome. Uh, I'm not seeing that. I don't have that Isn't information. It? But we did talk about that earlier. Well, so. I saw this on the Forty and Slip. They talked about it, and uh, I think it's the same thing. It's we're talking about the palindrome thing, right? Well, this one it sounds like it's just a shape that was engraved. Am I getting something mixed up? I think then we you're have another something mixed up. We there's have that another. Other one too. There's oh, another sorry. one. Hold on. Sorry, we have another one too. All right, whatever. Um, I think the other one is not quite as old though. Hold on, I've got it here. So. So what are you talking about? Uh, a mollusk that had some geometric zigzags carved into so it with a shark tooth. Thousand years ago. Yeah. Now, so that would that would predate what mainstream history would say uh, civilization. Right. right? I mean, right. Uh, by, by a lot. About by three hundred thousand years. Yeah. Okay. 
so but that's like a number i just like i can't even i can't even comprehend two hundred thousand years ago ago that was so what's the difference i can't even comprehend 10 years and i've done that three times (laughs) (laughs) well i have an easier idea with like the number 10 than the number two hundred thousand. so Um, aren't you (laughs) go ahead Well, I was just going to say the uh, this is the one you were thinking of. Oh, fifteen hundred right, year let's, old. Let's finish Tracy's thing real quick. Yeah. Sorry. So I mean that's so that's pretty much it. Five hundred thousand years 000. ago, yeah. people made a clear geometric design on a mollusk shell with a shark tooth. With a shark tooth, that's pretty fucking cool. Well, they they think it was a shark tooth, but yeah. So that's what I'd use. Why not? Um, so that that changes things because um, it's been kind of widely accepted in the scientific community that uh, Homo erectus, which would have been. <laughs> Homo erect, uh, <laughs> which would have been uh, the person handling this mollusk and carving the design. Um, it was, it's pretty much has been widely accepted up until now that they didn't have fine motor skills um, well enough to like conceptualize and execute something like that. So, uh, so it changes kind of the whole construct of that portion of evolution because because here's the weird thing is that they're always finding out that people were way ahead of where they initially thought they were so so that's why it's significant and i've i i I don't even want to get started on it again because i talk about this every time this comes up on the show and i just keep proposing that there is some kind of like there's some kind of cover-up about history that they don't want us to know the real extent of human history for some reason you know yeah and it always ties back in when you watch like documentaries on it and stuff and hidden history and suppressed history and stuff it always seems to lead to like the alien stuff you know it always seems to be well they don't want you to realize that there was an advanced civilization civilization back here that had you know was maybe genetically different and you know and and there's all these different theories and stuff but for some reason they really want us to just buy this one picture of the linear you know progression of of mankind that they've put together you know yeah in, in our country there's so many fucking things so many things that have been discovered over the years that are just lost in the smithsonian or something in that giant fucking basement where they put the uh uh wow what the fuck is the movie it's being handled by top men at the last scene of that stupid movie and they're like putting the thing away in the Smithsonian and like it's never going to be seen again, you know? Yeah, I don't that know. That shit what happens it constantly, is, but... but they parodied it on Family Guy. But Yeah. Uh, it, I think it was called The Relic, actually, the yeah, movie. Yeah, I think that was the um, movie. And, uh, and it's like some horrible monster, you know? And they th- But like, anyways, whatever. They found mummies in the United States. Um, lots of peculiar, uh, you know, bipedal... Uh, You know, the whole Bigfoot kind of genre of beings, I guess, you know. People always ask, like, why have they never found a body? I think they have, lots of times. And I think it just gets lost to history. (laughs) And then people are like, no, that wasn't real, you know. Yeah. um, So there's been a lot of stuff like that throughout history covered up. A lot of, like, Egyptian-esque, you know, artifacts that will be found here. And they just go, well, that's some weird anomaly. I don't know, you know. So I don't know what is going on with the whole historical cover-up. And why, who doesn't want us to fucking understand that, you know, we've been around a lot longer than they want us to think. Yeah. Are you, Andrea, you want to talk about your thing here? Um, yeah, are we done with the super old one? Well, what do you guys think about what I was just talking about? Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. I think. Oh, yeah. really? Right, yeah. right there on the head. No, really, come on. Well, no, I think that um, because I it's you, I can just in my mind is like a blur of thousands of fucking like things I've seen that don't jive with mainstream history, you know. Right. And it's pointless to try to go through them all. But what do you think? Well, I think that uh, it would make sense to make people feel less empowered and more um, like, well, we haven't been doing this forever. It's new to us. It's okay for you to not do everything because because you don't know how. You're new. People are new. You can't. <laughs> you think <laughs> that's what it is? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it just as another method of, you know, keeping people from realizing their full potential as human beings. Um, and, you know, kind of convincing people that they are less and stupider than they actually are because they're easier to manipulate and control that way. Yeah. And I, I to me, it also 
there's something about um, energy and technology suppression to it too because – for instance, like I, I tend to side with the people that think like the stuff built in Egypt, like we were talking about, is closer to like ten, eleven thousand years old rather than three or four thousand years old, mm-hmm. you know. And I think one of the, the keys to that is like they must be attempting to hide something about energy, you know, some way that we've done things in the past that they don't want us to realize we can do them now. And right. it could be to me what would make the most sense is like, yeah, they want us to if you go down the empowerment road. Um, they want us to be disconnected from things that could be empowering, such as like, you know, uh, acts of like mass consciousness, mass meditation or mass like focus and, and things like this to, uh, that may have been how people got like major feats accomplished in the past, you know? Yeah. Um, so I so al- we don't start working together again. You know? I, I heard right. another theory today about how the things in the past like that were done, like the giant monoliths and what have you, that just in the past, like people and animals were all just a lot bigger than they are today and but you know today we occasionally have like a seven foot tall person and that's just like the recessive gene that um, is still from manifesting a of itself. Giants from yeah, that, long ago. that we were yeah. giants because there's things well, that. Well, but certain other offshoots of, uh, I don't know what you call it, but our evolutionary offshoots, like, uh, you know, Neanderthals were huge giants. Right. What is the other one? Um, something gigantopicitous or some shit or fucking, what is that thing? I don't know what you're and talking about. I mean, about. but there were certain, like, like humanoid, you know, like I don't know what I, horrible with this terminology. I don't really know what you call them, but what do you call like, you know, uh, upright walking guy? You know, upright walking guy. Homo people. Um, <laughs> Are they ho- all homos? <laughs> well, so, well, you know, different types of homos throughout the years have uh, been giant. You know, compared yeah, to well, compared to us. Well, like the one uh, thing said so. Today, you know, we have a dragonfly whose wingspan is three inches or something, but they know that there is a prehistoric dragonfly whose wingspan was five feet. Right. That's a lot bigger. No, and the same thing has happened in our evolutionary line, I guess. Right. right? And so the, then the, the hypothesis is that this applied to humans as well. And but that other people would say that, no, there's too many missing links between those. Uh, what, do you, what do you call them? I'm I'm trying to find out right now. Okay, well, I mean, just help me out. What do you? Well, say something. What do you think you call them? I have no idea. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Predecessors. I don't know. Whatever. So a lot, but other people would say so. There's too many missing links between us and our supposed ancestors. A- ancestors. I'm not. But that wasn't the word I'm looking for. I'm like, what do you call in general all these different sta- stages and you know what do you. What's the term for those fuckers? Um, anyways, uh, you know, some the other people would say, look, there's too many missing links. Um, we don't actually fit into that evolutionary chain. And uh, you were actually maybe the, the cause of, you know, some interference in our genetics at some point from an outside source combined with one of those, you know, older forms of us. Uh do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So it wouldn't really be the change in atmosphere which caused the change, like from giant, you know, giant dinosaurs and giant animals can't exist anymore because of the change in atmosphere, because of the depleted ozone and things like that. Uh, <clears throat> so I don't know. I mean, do you think that's what happened to us, or do you think I, I, I'm, I think it's there's a pretty convincing argument to be made between the differences in us and our supposed evolutionary ancestors um there's some weird differences like we don't kind of make sense on this planet in a lot of ways you know it almost seems like maybe we are from some foreign genetics you know yeah i don't i don't i mean the thing that was most compelling to me about the giant theory is that like if you were way bigger it would be really easy to build a pyramid out of those blocks that seem really big to us it would have just been like making a house out of bricks now Yeah, yeah right yeah, it, like all some of these fucking megalithic structures all over the world would be a lot easier explained if people were twice the size. Or even, I mean, they said way bigger than that. Like then it would be sort of like, oh, how did they? Oh, oh, okay. They just they picked had, them up yeah. and they stacked had, yeah. them up. Yeah. <laughs> they had the same number of those size people. Well, I don't know, that would work. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, no, that I I kind of had the same thought, you know. But still, no. They didn't build the pyramids with, with giant uh, 
creatures. Giants. But so now there's another thing talking about suppressed history. There's so many newspaper accounts over the years of giant bones being discovered. Yeah. Like gi- giant humans being discovered. Uh, uh, their bones, you know. And uh, <laughs> so where do they, they always end up getting lost, you know. Same as like when they, they find like a cave full of like Egyptian looking like artifacts in the Grand Canyon. You know, all there is is newspaper articles now. You can't even, there. there's no record uh, the stuff goes to the Smithsonian. I was say they're probably you know? in the basement of the Smithsonian. No, they are, and and all the only record is like you know they'll have like A. Jones, representative of the Smithsonian, was on on uh you know on site to gather the materials for cataloging and stuff, and then there's just no record of them after that. Yeah, um, that happens so often. So where who is in charge of that cover? I mean, it's like well, but- people want to call you nuts for thinking this way, but like. And when it's so prevalent, how am I supposed to think that it's not some kind of consolidated effort at some level? But, you know, there's a whole show now on the History Channel, I think, about pieces like historical artifacts that have gone missing. And um, it's things like, you know, the flag, the famous flag from 9-11 that's in that picture of the fireman, like hoisting it up and... um, like a bunch of moon rocks although they solved that one uh you know jfk's brain it's just a ton of shit that's been stolen from nasa or museums and this is a show now try if you have information call this number email us and you know we're gonna try and crack the case so but i mean it's so prevalent enough with with things that people around today might have information about it you know oh yeah so well now some of it is that's like interesting artifacts get stolen you know and they're cool and and people know they can get a lot of money from a, some kind of weird private collector you know from like um, george washington's teeth yeah or some you know so that does happen but i'm more talking about like the stuff that would implicate an agenda well no i know, know but i'm just saying um, like look how much stuff goes missing like it's so easy to just oh it's gone i don't know that's weird and yeah. then you forget about it yeah, no, it's true, and it's also part of our like our culture that we live like sort of disposably day to day, and then the next batch of news comes the next day, and it's been that way for a hundred years, really, you know. So the stories happen, and then forget about new it. stories happen. Yeah. You know, I mean, it happens on our show. There's plenty of stuff I wish we would follow up on, but fucking new shit happens. Sorry, what do you got? Here's I have a really interesting story here about um a series uh, over a dozen skeletons found over a several year period in Wisconsin um, of giants, skeletons of giants that were found um, that apparently the Smithsonian had uh, taken. Um, They put one or two of them on display and they have been apparently actively covering up the existence of other giants. Um, And this article I'm re I have right here I'll put it on the Facebook it says that um, hundreds of giant skeletons have been found in the Midwest of the United States um, including Illinois uh, where'd my list go Wisconsin Illinois um, Iowa so they found over a hundred of these over the past hundred or so years um, many of them occurring where we have mound uh, pyramids and and burial pyramids Um. So, so anyway, um, a lot of people think that the Smithsonian covered, uh, are covering it up in order to kind of mute the ancient cultures of America that we took over when we came through and murdered ah. everybody. And so, um, so the, also now they don't want you to remember that like as a species, yeah, we, we just annihilated everything in our path. Right. Um, and, and it's, maybe it's another thing where it's like, well, America is new, and nothing was here before us, and our culture is the only culture that matters. Here. Well, they do sweep uh, Native American history under the rug in a yeah. similar <laughs> in a similar fashion. Yeah, yeah. So, but here's um. But so now, Nate, that's another interesting point, though. Native American tribes have stories of the you know the people that live in the mountains and the people that live in the forest, and they're the big. They're basically Bigfoot stories, but they call them like. You know, other tribes. They're another. Right. They're another they're tribe, and they were driven. And there's old legends about they were driven, you know, over a period of time into the deep forest because we took over the the better hunting ground. You know. Um, right. And uh, that's what happens with with other uh, animals and predators in in, in uh, ecosystem. You know, the one dominates the primary 
uh, the primary area of wherever there's, you know, resources and the, the good fucking whatever they call that, the, the good shit zone. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and everything else gets pushed out into the deeper territory where as people we really don't go. Um, right. We think we do, but it's not. You don't really go out to the super fucking deep wilderness, you know. Um, well, sorry, what are you uh No, that's, I there? just, uh, I was just reading about there. I'm going to put this article up. There are some details about some of the giant skeletons that they found in Wisconsin, um, one of which had a double rows of teeth. So Ooh. the skeleton they found had two sets of teeth. Sure, these are like in their human, hat, human in their looking kind of things, right? Yeah, they're they're definitely human. A little looking. more like apish kind of looking, like um, yeah. Do you I say Neanderthal looks... or Neanderthal? I think you should say Neanderthal. That's lame. I don't know. I say I like, thal. I like thal. Um, <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Uh, in near Potosi, Wisconsin, um, they found two giant, well-preserved skeletons of an unknown race. While people were digging a foundation for a sawmill, uh, one skeleton measured seven and a half feet, the other eight feet. And the skulls of each had prominent cheekbones and double rows of teeth. So prominent cheekbones, I think Neanderthals had more prominent craniums, didn't they? Weren't they? Yeah, kind of, like, I think so. Their forehead sloped. Yeah, whatever. Um, so this <laughs> sounds more like they were. And if they were well preserved in 1870, I don't know, it doesn't say anything about them being. So then, but then, anything, but then, but then, what? Ha- my point is, that then, what happened to them? Where are they now? Does they're that- they are, they're in the basement of the Smithsonian. They were given to the Smithsonian. And One now is gone. on display as like the American giant, and the rest of them really? are gone. Uh, yeah, they they have a name for it, uh, Princess of Aztalan. Okay, but then, according to like mainstream history, that also didn't happen. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck is going on? All right. Um. um so, but these were all like uh excavated from what could be assumed were kind of sacred burial grounds they were all in burial mounds or had um mound pyramids nearby so they were or, civilized they were yeah they were yeah. absolutely civilized and they were in they were in cemeteries it's not like they just found like one rogue skeleton sure they were people buried together no and that's one thing i've seen over and over is old new newspaper clippings of like seven giants found in uh iowa you know mm-hmm. river basin or something You're like what um, and then, yeah, where did they go? Smithsonian. What the hell's going on at the Smithsonian? They have they all the giants there. Doing with all the giants. Maybe they're going to uh, get some DNA off the giant skeletons and splice them with a frog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make a giant park. Well, you know, that would be a cool movie, though. Uh, yeah. I get like, well, no, what would be a cool movie is to have the dinosaurs go nuts and get out of control and then like genetically engineer big feet to fight the dinosaurs now that's a movie oh yeah I that's jurassic park five big I foot, think yeah, you jurassic, just described Pat there yeah. jurassic park five is like all right look this has gone wrong four times this time <laughs> let's really just, we figured let's just it out. send a bunch of sasquatches in to test the park out first <laughs> um and then yeah Let's see what happens. They're like wearing beanies and carrying balloons on the way in, and then shit <laughs> yeah. goes down on one of the rides. Wearing denim overalls. <laughs> All right, well, I don't care if we do that much more. Well, I had to stab myself with a splinter. Uh, oh. What do you think? We don't have very much more. All right, what do you want to do? Um, we can talk about the djinn, the the mythical uh, creatures. Okay. Um, so they're... Uh, they're being accused of starting Dubai house fires. Well, explain what they are for people who don't know. So uh, they're creatures mentioned in the Quran that are comparable to spirits or other supernatural beings in European cultures. So it's in the Middle they're East. Goblins. Yeah, a lot of um, no, this says it's a deeper th- myth than that. I mean, it's basically kind of like what could be translated in other cultures into like your shadow person, a demon, your fucking your negative your negative side they're like your you know your personal demon basically um, and they, they, they according to legend like they normally would attach to a, a specific person like right. one, one gin gets one person you and know, then uh, to haunt but cats help keep them at bay okay oh. um so but anyway so 69 percent of muslims across the middle east believe in the jinn um, so in the UAE, where Dubai is located, uh, the gin gets blamed for a variety of problems. Uh, so, and one of, 
One of the people here described the djinn as a woman who walks with her feet twisted. Anyone who looks her directly in the face goes mad. Um, and then gets lit on fire. Right. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> the fire's not coming yet. <laughs> um, and then this also says, last year in October, a man was granted a divorce from his wife because she was possessed by a djinn and thus would not sleep with him. <laughs> so and the court decided she was not being honest with them about her gin problem so uh yeah the court decided i wasn't being honest about my gin problem <laughs> you have to go to rehab <laughs> all right um so anyways uh this time i guess a bunch of fires have been blamed on the gin by like a bunch of different people though it's like a, a bunch of people had house fires and they were all like oh yeah it was the gin yeah the gin but uh, yeah. <laughs> but so the uh, the criminal insurance scam, like. well the criminal evidence department of the Dubai police is not buying it, oh, no? and they say that <laughs> yeah, that's a shame. Uh, the expert is okay. So Muhammad explained the expert is all ears to the story, which he might not believe, as there have been cases in which a person or persons tell lies and make weird claims that a jinn is behind the fire. So they say the fires were often started by the homeowners themselves, often through negligence, and they blamed the gin in hope of compensation. And that their recommendation is that homeowners install closed circuit cameras to prevent any further disputes over what happened. <laughs> so, <laughs> weird That's country. Funny. Yeah. yeah. Weird. You still get away with that. That like what if that if that? No, you try here, that here. You know, like, dude, there is a. F- fucking ghost running around lighting all the houses on fire they'd just be like all right you're clearly the one lighting all the houses on fire you're <laughs> yeah. un- you're under you're arrest no, but there, there's like a legit investigation so you know oh, we'll uh see if they turn up any gin we'll follow up on that yeah maybe uh, we'll find one is that it yeah that's it I that's mean, all yeah we don't have any we can't do any videos from here so. no and we got no. some other bigger stuff we can get into next week but yeah we got a lot to get into next week we'll still do the the uh what's his name hebdo or whatever charlie, charlie hebdo. hebdo yeah we'll still do the uh paris uh shooting next week after we're all done being horrifically depressed uh which i'm gonna be for a while i think hopefully with the recovery on sunday evenings I don't know, man. I don't know. I was really feeling good before that happened. I really was. Yeah, I hear you. So we'll make it through. How? Well, well one thing at a time. We got through the show tonight. Yeah, yeah we no, didn't think we could do that. Right up. <laughs> the show was good, and now that the show is ending, now I'm getting sad again. Now I don't want. I like. Now what am I going to do? Go sit on the couch and punch myself in the face? Do we piss still my have pants? any listeners out there? Somebody call in. Um, call. They'd have to know my cell phone number to call Or my in. cell phone number. Or get at, get at us on Facebook. We'll get you on on the line. Come on. Call and talk to us. On the horn. Yeah, we'll get you on the horn. Want to. On I feel, the blower. I feel bad for Trix. He sounded really sad. The earth Yeah. yeah. Um, if you guys are still listening, we we're thinking of you. Yep, everybody out in Lions. Now, I don't think I, I don't think I knew this person, but um, well, it he seems said like it was someone that, he talked about a lot. But yeah, I don't think I don't that recall. I that I ever hung out with him. But it seems like somebody that everybody uh, really liked. You know, but yeah. I, I don't think I could really say anything about him because um, I just don't know. But, yeah. But as far as my thing goes. Um, I uh I don't know. I'm uh I just feel like my stomach is just twisting around, you know. Yeah. It's just really it's like I know I'm not going to die. Like I know I'm not going to jail. I just like it's just being in the system and it's is, just it, it's such it's so long you know it's it takes it's so months long. before you even start they right. give you a court date months away and that's like step one of seven you and know it just hangs over your head no i want to just like go to court and be like well, just like, can we do this the, all today just give me the standard sentence and i'll fucking get it over with just now please <laughs> no but it's gonna be an arraignment oh how do you plead i plead suck my dick leave me alone <laughs> 
I'm out of here. I don't even know what to do in this case. Well, well, that's what we have to figure out. Fucking Christ. Um, so. You know, and it really sucks because uh, I was feeling really good. Like everything was finally starting to Things go well. Things were really turning around. Fall into place. Yeah. But that's always the way and maybe this somehow plays into that. I don't know what how. Does that mean? But I mean that later we'll be like, oh, well, that makes sense why that happened then. Looking back. <sighs> I don't know what that means. No. Just the, wor- the the thing about it too is in this situation, I'm just so uncomfortable with myself. Like I want to get away from myself. Like I want to fucking punch myself in the eye until I'm dead. Like I just can't I really hate myself right now, you know? Yeah. For what I did. Yeah, I know that feeling, but... Like, where I just can't even stand to be me at all right now. Yeah, it's not productive, but it's also not something that you can just shake off, you know? It's not uh, the best way to spend your energy, but you can't help it, and... It makes sense. Yeah. All right. Well. Well. Fuck. What are we going to do? Back to real life. I know. I don't. I hate it when the show's over. Just go back out there and piss my pants on the couch all night. Well, yeah, do but you, then... Do you have to piss your pants on the couch? I'm going to do something. I'm like, in, you know what I mean? When you feel like this, you're just like... what? You yeah. have, something has to happen. Like, you have to, like, lash out at something or do something or fucking hurt yourself or, you know. For some reason, I've always found it satisfying to punch myself in the face. You have always done that. Yeah. Always. Which has got to be creepy for someone else to see. Yeah. yeah. Um... <laughs> M- Mom hated that. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> it's like I don't know, man. Yeah, I've had a rough time emotionally over my life. I don't know what to do, I and mean, it's obviously I'm not getting any better. Fucking the way I wish I could tell you guys the story. Oh my god! But what I did last night was just probably the most dangerous and irrational thing I've ever done, perhaps. So, and that's saying a lot. That is for, yeah. for people <laughs> for people who know me, um, and I'm a bit yeah. You know what? I think I'm just still kind of in shock right now. I think I'm just totally shaken up, and whatever. Yeah. Well, you know, we got a lot of good stuff coming up here with the show. So, a bunch of segments we had in play partially completed for tonight that'll be ready to go. So yeah, we got some good stuff coming <sighs> up. All right. So, yeah. I guess that's it then. That's all, right. all I got. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in to the Sunday, Sunday evening, evening overdose. And uh, we'll be back next week. Nine o'clock, like always. Uh, condolences again to everybody in Lions. And uh, I don't know. Condolences to me for being a fucking idiot and ruining my life. Uh, condolences to my girlfriend who is now going to have to fucking take care of a shitload of things because I won't be able to fucking Christ, whatever. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.